Hi, I'm Chris Bullock. My wife Carolyn and I are owners of the Wandering Bull LLC. We're one of the country's largest Native American craft suppliers. We sell a wide range of products including craft materials, contemporary art, and antiques. My parents started the business in 1969 when we were kids running around at powwows. And more than 50 years later, our family business is still going strong. Today we're going to work on a side stitch biased weave and we're going to use the reproduction clay wampum beads that we sell. So I've done a piece of side stitch here and basically what I'm going to do is finish it off and then show you how to start it as well. It's going to be a four needle technique. So I've started my a piece of leather, deer skin, nice and soft. We're going to start off with four needles and it will basically consist of four beads. So I'm going to start with a tenno beading needle with imitation sinew, the single ply. The knots will be on the suede side of the material. So now I need to space out where the four needles are going to go. So for this project, the thread unfortunately needs to be long um, so you can complete the whole project without having to um, interrupt it and put a knot in the middle. You want to double your single ply sinew so you have two strands basically. The two strands will be tied into the knot at the end. And the reason that we're going to double it, you'll see in a moment. So that's how we're going to start. There's, our, there's the knots on the back. We're going to start off, and the first row is going to consist of the four beads. So I'm going to put on four whites. So I have my four whites in place. So let's call this hole number one, two, three, and four. So now I'm going to take the thread from hole number two and since we've doubled the thread, I have two, it's a two ply thread, I'm going to take the needle and split the two threads. So the first row is the most difficult one. So now I've got thread number two, here's thread number three, and I'm basically, I've pulled it apart, my needle's going in between them. And slide the bead down. And the last one, number four. So I have, this is thread number one that we applied all the beads to. Thread number two, thread number three, and now thread number four. I'm going to go between bead number three and bead number four, split the threads, that's our first row, and this is thread number one that's coming out, so now I'm going to take thread number two, put on four beads, four white beads, one, And we're going to repeat that process. So this is actually thread number three. Going to put the needle between the two threads. So 
So now this is thread number four in reality. And split the threads. So now thread number one is going to go between bead three and bead four. Let me move this aside. So that's the row number two. So now I'm going to take basically the next thread and let's go one more row of white beads. So I need to put four more on. And it will make a little more sense to you once we add that first row of purple beads. So I'm going to take the needle and split the threads again. You're always basically going between the two threads. That's what's securing the beads in place. Give them a little, little tug. So you need to be patient in the, in the beginning to get it all nice and even. And you want to keep your work fairly tight, but not overly tight. The tighter you pull the threads, the more the beads want to like bunch up in place. You want them to lay nice and flat. So I'm going to take the next strand. So now we're going to copy this design. So now I need four purple beads. So I'm going to take the next thread and split the two, two beads again. Take the next thread. So the more beads you have, you basically need a thread for every bead. So if you want to do a, a side stitch that's 10 beads, you need 10 threads. A lot going on all at once. Um, so it is confusing. When you first start off, do something simple, three, four beads wide, and you'll have better results and you'll be less frustrated with your project. All right. So now I go back to the beginning thread. I'm going to put four beads on and I'm going to put a row of white. So it'll be three rows white, one row purple, one row white, one row purple. So I've got one row of purple. I'm going to add four more white beads. And you can kind of see how that is, is going to work out. So let's go back to the next thread. Split those beads. Split that thread. Let's 
slide your bead down, get your next thread. Open that guy up, needle through, and the last one. You see that pattern developing. So the next row I'm going to put on is will be um, purple, and I'll put four purples on. That's why I like my threads nice and long because you're going to have a long project. Well, it depends on the length of your project, um, how long you, if you made a bracelet. You don't need the threads this long. If you're doing a choker or a necklace, you certainly want nice long threads and not have to interrupt the middle and apply a knot. Um, one, two. So that's the basic beginning of the bias weave. As I said, four threads, four beads. If you want 10 beads, you're 10 threads. An awful lot going on here. I wasn't going to bore you with making this length of um, side stitch, but what I want to do is show you how to end it. So I'm going to put this aside. So here's my end. I'm going to tighten these guys up. And you see how they tighten up nicely. P apply a little pressure to the beads when you pull the threads. Don't pull them too, too tight because it will just get all bunchy. So I've started, I've started the project with three rows of white. I've ended with three rows of white. Just to keep it symmetrical, there's no right or wrong way. And I'm going to end it with this odd shaped lace. And this is also going to be the tie that I'd use to tie around my neck. Um, if you were making a choker, you would need it much shorter, but you still need a tie to pull it around. Um, so, this one here, you can see I, the suede side is on the outside. So, Let's, we'll follow suit on this. So we'll start with thread number one. To end it, you basically need the proper spacing for the beads for the threads to go through. So I put thread number one there. This is thread number two. I need that spacing for the bead. Thread number three, same thing. I need that spacing for the bead. And then the last thread. Once again, that spacing for the bead. I'm going to put my needle in right after that bead. And pull them tight. See how they just finish up nicely. Okay. So I have all my threads in. I'm going to flip this guy over and tie some knots. So I like basically just pinch a little bit of that leather. You're going to fold it in half, kind of. I'm not going to go all the way through the leather. So I didn't come through the other side. A pair of pliers would be nice. So I have a loop and my thread. I'm going to go through this loop a couple of times. The imitation sinew 
is a waxed nylon cord and because it's waxed it wants to stretch and it's slippery so I got one knot and I'm gonna go through that again so I just double my knots all the time when I'm using the imitation sinew so the other, other technique is I like wrapping it around the needle so I've got two wraps around the needle and then just pull the needle Pull that needle snug, pull that knot snug. Let's get rid of this guy so he's not in our way anymore. And now we'll move on to the number two and the same technique basically. We're just gonna pinch a little bit of that leather, wrap around a couple of times, pull, do it one more time. One, two wraps, pull the needle. That guy's nice and tight. And the third one. So I have one more thread to tie off and I'm gonna finish it off similar to this end. I'm gonna use this thread. going to go through the leather that would secure number four basically going to fold it over so we have the knots on the inside and I can snip off this little point with any craft project you want to keep your work nice and neat. You want to keep the least amount of thread visible at all times. It just shows the quality of the craftsmanship. And that's something that comes with, you know, doing these projects over time. I'm going to pre-punch some holes since my needle is not that sharp to go through the leather. Um, the beading needles designed, um, if you're using a 10-0 bead for a 10-0 needle, if you're using 11-0 beads, is 11-0 needle. The Glover's needle is um, a leather needle. It has three sides on it, and it's designed, it's manufactured to sew leather with. Goes through leather nicely, also slides into your finger nicely. So there is a little bit of caution you want to use with those Glover's needles. And for the most part, you don't need to pre-punch your holes with the Glover's needle. It's that sharp. stitch and I'm just going to tie the knot off on the end here and once again I got my needle through my work wrap my thread around a couple of times Give it a good pull and do it one more time. So, bias weave. Wampum beads, you know, be a necklace. Um, necklace choker, 
I've seen them done with wampum beads, tiny seed beads, tenno seed beads. Um, obviously, the smaller the beads, the smaller your work. And the, the wampum beads are, are nice for an example. It's, it's big. It shows you what, how those beads move, how the threads move. Start off with a small project, something simple, and um, you'll have better success once, you're, uh, once you've figured out the stitch, then move into a larger project. You'll be less frustrated in the end. And this is the Biased Weave. Thanks for watching our videos. You can order supplies and learn more about Native American crafts by visiting our website, wanderingbowl.com. On our Facebook and Instagram pages, you'll find weekly specials, a schedule of upcoming events, and interesting historical facts about Native American culture. We not only sell supplies, we use them ourselves, as you've seen in these videos. And if you ever need help with an order or a project, you can always give us a call at 1-800-430-2855. We'd love to hear from you.